We owe seventy trillion dollars. Yeah, I understand that, but don't you, you can't to walk out say, a four trillion dollar solution, I, okay, which is basically just a way for the Democrats to avoid dealing with this until twenty seventeen. I'm not here to talk about plans to deal with this till twenty seventeen. I'm saying we've got a real problem, and I'm tired of Republicans and Democrats who either want Republicans who want to burn the place to the ground, and Democrats, with all due respect, who want to offer a plan that gets it through the ne- their end of their second term of their presidency, and then screws me and my kids okay, when it's over, no and until that. we okay. do that we have to deal with the extraction that is at foot. It is the reason the financial markets are behaving the way they're behaving. That is a mathematical fact. This is not some opinion. This is a mathematical fact. Tens of trillions of dollars are being extracted from the United States of America. Democrats aren't doing it. Republicans are not doing it. An entire integrated system, financial system, trading system, taxing system that was created by both parties over a period of two decades is at work on our entire country right now. And we're sitting here arguing about whether we should do the $4 trillion plan that kicks the can down the road for the president for 2017 or burn the place to the ground, both of which are reckless, irresponsible, and stupid. And the fact of the matter is, until we actually, and, I don't, and I'm sorry to lose my no, temper, no, and get, no. but I tell you what, I've been coming on TV for three years doing this. And the fact of the matter is that there's a refusal on both the Democratic and the Republican side of the aisle to acknowledge the mathematical problem, which is that the United States of America is being extracted. It's being extracted through banking, it's being extracted through trade, and it's being extracted through taxation. And there's not a single politician that has stepped forward Susan, to deal yeah, with this. But there's only uh, one right now. The, the leader of the free world, whether you like it or not, the but, president of the United States is arguably one of the most powerful individuals we have out there. But and Susan, he's what you're president. saying is exactly the point that Dylan is making. It's no. not about one guy. It's about all no, of them No, I actually disagree. I think Dylan's saying it is about her. one guy. It what is about one guy. It is about one guy. What would you like him, him to do? I would, like him, him, to I would do. like him to go to the people of the United States of America and say, people of the United States of America, your Congress is bought. Your Congress is incapable of making legislation on health care, banking, trade, or taxes, because if they do it, they will lose their political funding, and they won't do it. But I'm the President of the United States, and I will have a country that is run by a bot Congress. So I'm not going to work with a bot Congress and try to be Mr. Big Guy, I'm working with the bot Congress. I'm going to abandon the bot Congress, like Teddy Roosevelt did, and I'm going to go to the people of the United States, and I'm going to say, you've got a bot Congress. And until we get rid of the bot Congress, which is Jimmy Williams constant point, which is get the money out of politics, and until a president says that's the problem and says he's going to fix it, there is no policy that I can possibly see, no matter how brilliant your idea may be, or your idea, or my idea, or her idea, or your idea at home, is... That idea will not happen as long as there is the capacity to basically fire a politician who disagrees with me by taking funding away from him. Is that a fair assessment? Money in politics is the root of all political evil. It is corruption at its worst. And until we step up and kick that out of the park, it's going to be the same system all and only the president could do that. We're going to no, no, no. You guys. Congress has to do it too. The, the Congress has to do it too. But I'll tell you what: how bad does it have to get? How much money has to be extracted? Asking, how many I'm things have to be hurt? The brass tax. Okay, physically, what do you do? For, you go and give a speech. Right now. To, yeah, right now. Right now. You say. You say. And then what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow, what happens is you begin the process of actually investing in solving the problem. So how? I come out and I say, "How I create an infrastructure bank with two percent blending immediately." There's that once I explain to people the problem, once I explain to you you have cancer, the re- once you understand how screwed up your trade, tax, and banking policies are, believe me, you will have no issue when I incorporate an infrastructure bank that I fund with repatriated offshore money that I bring in and then use to create 2% direct lending to every business in America. Because when you realize that the banking system is fully corrupt and defrauding us, and I come out and say that, which is what I want my president to do, that, that at that exact moment I say, you know what, we got a screwed up situation here, people. You all know it, and now what? I'm going to admit it. And as a result, not only have I admitted it, but we're going to begin the process of solving it like grown-ups. They did it in World War II. They did it after the Civil War. They did it in Latin America with the Brady Bonds. We are not seeing it happen now. The panel stays uh, a, a little more emotional than I anticipated getting <laughs> at work this afternoon, but what am I going to do?